Gaius Laelius, Consul 190 BCE. Gaius Laelius seems to have been either from a fallen senatorial family or else from a rising family which relied on the patronage of the Scipio family. Laelius seems to have been a longtime friend and companion of Scipio Africanus and was probably close in age to him since he was old enough to see Scipio save his father at the Battle of Tychinus in 218 BCE which was not long after Scipio himself had achieved manhood. Laelius earned a name for himself long before he held any official office. It was not until 202 BCE that he served as Keister, the lowest elected office that would make one a senator. This makes me believe that he was born as an equestrian and that Scipio used his influence following his victory at Zama to put his friend Laelius in the Senate. Due to his friendship with Scipio and his semi-noble background, it is far too common to speak of, quote, low origins for such people, but we're still speaking only of a lesser social elite and not of a dirt farmer. Laelius was qualified to fulfill his years of military service as a commander of various formations at the overall commander's discretion. Luckily for his ambitions, Scipio achieved high office young and employed his friend frequently. During Scipio's Iberian campaign from 210 to 206, which essentially won the Second Punic War, Laelius served as his second-in-command. During the important land and sea siege of New Carthage in 209, Laelius commanded the Roman fleet. When Scipio defeated Hannibal's brother Hasdrubal at Baikula in 208, Laelius commanded the Roman left, which probably meant that he was holding off Hasdrubal's attack so that Scipio on the right could strike the main blow. Defeated at Baikula, of course, Hasdrubal famously decided to cross the Alps and reinforce his brother Hannibal, which then resulted in the destruction of Hasdrubal's army at the Battle of the Metaurus. Following Baikula, Laelius accompanied Scipio as they fought against Mago and his small Carthaginian fleet, and steadily occupied all of the harbors and forts in the area. When Scipio was elected consul in 205 and sent to Sicily to prepare the invasion of Africa, Laelius again accompanied him and served as his chief assistant. Laelius went to Africa to try to win the support of the Numidians and the Berbers, which apparently worked or was thought to have worked. The invasion finally occurred in 204, but Syphax, the Berber leader, remained true to Carthage, so Scipio detached Laelius to deal with him. Laelius in 203 did manage to defeat and capture Syphax and his whole family in Curta and brought them to Rome. This removed a major obstacle holding back Scipio, who was being kept low on resources by Rome, which feared that he might become too great, but yet knew that he was the only man for the job of finishing off Carthage. By 202, Carthage had recalled Hannibal and fielded an army in Africa to face Scipio. At the Battle of Zama, Laelius commanded the cavalry on Scipio's left and struck Hannibal in the rear at a key moment during what turned out to be a grueling but decisive battle. Laelius's political ambitions were slowly realized after this, though it seems that Scipio's backing was both a positive and a negative. He served as Aedile in 197 and as Praetor in 196, in which capacity he governed Sicily. Laelius ran for and lost the consular election of 192, but ran again and won in 190. It is possible that part of his earlier defeat was due to the Senate's fear of giving Scipio's friends too much power. When he won in 190, however, his colleague was Scipio's own brother. One of the year's commands was to go to Asia Minor in a campaign against Antiochus III the Great, the Seleucid Emperor. Laelius coveted this assignment due to the glory and the great wealth that it would bring, but the other Scipio was just as eager. Ultimately, Scipio Africanus said that if his brother were given the assignment, that he would accompany him on the campaign as an advisor, an offer that the Senate readily accepted, since Antiochus' new ace general was none other than the exiled Hannibal. This does not seem to have hurt the seemingly lifelong friendship between Laelius and the Scipio brothers, however. While Laelius organized Cisalpine Gaul and repopulated two cities that year, the other Scipio brother earned the agnomen Asiaticus for his landmark victory at Magnesia, which um, significantly did not feature Scipio Africanus, 
who was not present. After his uneventful but fruitful consulship, Laelius did things typical of a senior senator. His friend Scipio Africanus died around 180 BCE or so, leaving Laelius behind as possibly the only man who had accompanied Scipio on all of his legendary campaigns. He served as an ambassador at least a couple of times. Polybius came to Rome in 168 as a political hostage, and after a few years decided to write the histories to explain how and why Rome came to dominate the world. In 160, he reports that he interviewed Laelius regarding Scipio Africanus and the battles of the Second Punic War. Polybius' affiliation with the Scipionic Circle colors much of his presentation of material and accounts for much of the reason why the more established noble families are generally more kindly represented than new men. At some point after 160, Laelius, who must have been around 80 years old, died. Despite all of his achievements, he ended up being less represented in the later Roman tradition than his son, who was a constant companion of Scipio Aemilianus.